This poem is to mothers of sons. I know they have fathers too, but today um, I speak to mothers. I'm a mother, so I speak for mothers and to mothers today. It's dedicated to a beautiful, sweet boy who chose me to be his mother. Seven years old in my bedroom doorway, bubbling over from Saturday morning cartoons and giggles. Mommy, mommy, I had a dream I was wearing a skirt and you ripped it off me like, boy, what you doing with that on? Half smiling, half asleep, I just barely got the joke. Seven years later, awakened from my jet lag, induced snap by stifled chaos behind slam shut door, I'm alerted that there will be no giggles today. Another bad day coming desperately to his end has produced a blunt trauma, and the triage must be swift and accurate. Scalp already under my tongue, I'm going in. What's wrong, son? Everything? What's wrong with you, son? I don't think so. Well, who cares what they think? Fact, mothers of sons have to step delicately around tears, too. Slow, careful, steady, steady, steady. In this moment, the earth instantly begins to quake. The Ralph Lauren navy blue walls chosen to affirm maleness, as confirmed by the Home Depot sales representative, are visibly sweating. And I watch a crack the size of Texas shoot through the dam of his prepubescent world before my very eyes. Because I don't want them to be right. I don't know why I'm so obsessed with the paint on the walls in this moment when I'm clearly in the quiet iris of a hurricane, but my eyes find the, so the closet door a soft sky blue oasis. Did I choose the wrong color? Fact, mothers of sons choose blue because blue is the option for boys, right? In my son's closet, there's always been a polychromatic burst of butterflies and hummingbirds, grasshoppers and silly shadow puppets singing made-up alphabet songs, parachutes and Peter Pan-sized fantasies. The little window in there always faces a ruby-slippered sunrise, his dancing shoes lined with gold dust, hyper tippy toes, repetitively and eternally in motion, from beneath the gentle sapphire door seep sepia folklore, fairy tales, the shadow of a cartoon garden fence, and most days he picks orange tulips and sunflowers there. But on this day, he has become aware of his seven-year-old little boy spirit in there, crouched behind the slate door, beside a toy box full of broken parts, with sentimental value, and he is in full anaphylactic shock. Terror in his eyes like desert sand, his breath stalled in strange spurts, and I know neither my Lamas nor yoga-trained breath will find its way to his lungs, no matter how insistent, how thorough my inhale, exhale, silent prayer is patting his little limp hand in an attempt to coax him out and safely back into my sweet boy's present body still blooming softly at its own pace. So I wait. I wait for the words to wash away the sound of tears. I will my thoughts away from silently brewing death wishes on the capital T they's that dare attack a gentle boy. For no other reason than curiosity, I wait and channel a grandmother's forgiving heart. I try to rock a rhythm he can't resist as he comes face to face with the, with the choice between training wheels bent and diving headfirst over handlebars into inevitable stitches and permanent scars. I wait, sutures, gauze, bandages in trembling left hand. I'm going in. 
Sun. Sun. Sun, I really need you to listen. Fact, he's a teenager, he knows everything. And naturally, my ancient wisdom couldn't possibly apply. But I'm hoping that today he knows that I must give it anyway. Because the truth I am forced to know is that the weight of these words must be heavy. Heavy enough to keep him from joining the exponentially increasing numbers of urban gay males in the U.S. who will make their first attempt to end their own lives before the tender age of 16 yet light enough to allow room for art and imagination and the generosity of spirit that will sustain his skinny teenage frame through the awkward squeal of puberty and inevitable heartbreak. Son, I need you to listen. Not to me, not to them. I need you to listen to yourself. What do you feel inside you when the butterflies fly freely, when time catches up to your heartbeat and all you want to do is sing? What are the lyrics? What song lulls your spirit senseless when you wake up rested? No nightmares, no lingering terrors. Whose smile falls on your lips? What do you feel inside your heart song? Because they can't know. They can't imagine in their wildest fantasies what twinkles inside your tiny little pupils, what magic and mystery blinks your eyelids and flutters your fingertips in your sleep. They don't know and may never know that sweet blackberry juice from ancient vines bore the black into your mahogany skin, that your melanin was blessed by voodoo mystic high priestesses who whispered warrior chants to my womb. If they knew that they were in the presence of brilliance, more mud lines the inner chamber of your heart. And if your sleeping dragon was awakened, she would waste no time on venom and vengeance, but her fire breath would glow eternal and burn violet. How could they possibly understand the complexity of a soul rhythm? Syncopated to a Allah's metronome, time to tree branch swings and the orbit of outer rooms while theirs nod to the trends and whims of commercial chart toppers. You hum uncomposed notes strung together by your maker's hands, finely tuned and self aware. You are grand mix master. If they knew that they were in the presence of brilliance and that their words might be stone dead silent by the angels for blasphemy, banished to Babylon in a blink, then they would know that their futile taunts were powerless. Their religion Religion watered down and wasted, the monikers in their vocabulary too limited, the box too crowded to straighten the lines of your existence, and that despite their cruelty, one day you would make the choice you are making this very moment to step forward and be exactly who you are without apology, without explanation, without mourning, without a shroud of grief. But then, it's not about them, my darling sweet boy. They may never have a clue. They are not meant to understand this because the knowing is meant for you. Thank you.